Erev Tov Rabotai, we are continuing with our Mishnah Yomi Masechet Chala, we are up to Perik Gimel, Mishnah Gimel. Today's Mishnah should be Le'el Nishmat, Neria Ben Svetlana Aranbaev, Neliyahu Ben Burcha Yisraelov, Menuchatam Began Eden, Amen. We know that produce that is hectish, that was consecrated to the Bet Mikdash, it is not subject to the obligation of Chala, because the Torah says in Sefer Bamidbar, chapter 15, Pasuk 20, Rishit Arisotechem, the first of your doughs, which Chazal learned out, it has to be privately owned doughs in order to be obligated in Chala, but not dough of Hegdish, dough that was consecrated to the Bet Mikdash. So today's Mishnah is going to explain how this halachad, how this law too also depends on the stage in the process that the dough has reached when it was consecrated. Higdisha isata atshro gilgela uvdaata chayevet. If she consecrated her dough to the Bet Mikdash before she completed its kneading, meaning before the point when it became subject to Chala, and again, based off Mishnah Aleph in this chapter, we are discussing now a dough made of wheat flour, Ufda'ata, the Mishnah says, she, and she redeemed it right away before completing its kneading, Chayevet, it is subject to the Chala obligation when she, when she completes its kneading, because even though dough that is hectic is exempt from Chala, this dough was no, lo- no longer hegdish when its kneading was completed, and therefore it became subject to the chala obligation, Misha Gingela. So too, if she consecrated the dough only after she completed its kneading, in which case it had already become subject to chala, Ufda Ata, and she then redeemed it, Chayevet, it remained subject to the obligation of chala, and Varshim explained. Once a dough becomes subject to the obligation of chala, it remains obligated even though it's later consecrated, even though later it's given as hegdish. Now, although the Mishnah is speaking of a case where it was redeemed, the hegdish produce remains obligated in Masod even if it was not redeemed, again, since the obligation took effect before it was consecrated. However, hikdishata atshro gingela, if she consecrated it before she completed its kneading, meaning before it became subject to the chala obligation, the gingila hagizbar and the temple treasurer completed its kneading, pidata, and then she redeemed the pitura. It is exempt from chala shebishat chovata hayta pitura. The reason for this is because at the time of its obligation, meaning the time when the kneading was completed and the obligation would have taken effect. It was exempt since it belonged to Hegdish. Since the dough was exempt from Chala when, it was, when its kneading was completed, it remains exempt even after it is redeemed. And that is an Abotai of Mishnah Gimel. Mishnah Dao now continues based off the Mishnah we just learned that whether Hegdish is subject to the obligation of Chala it de- it de- is dependent on the stage in the process that the dough reached when it was consecrated. We know Hekdish is also not subject to the obligation of Ma'asrot. So this Mishnah, Mishnah Dal, is going to explain that this exemption of um, Ma'asrot and Hekdish item also depends on when the produce was consecrated. Kayotzebo, similarly, Hamagdish perotav ad shirobau leonat ma'asrot ufda'an chayavin. If someone consecrated his fruits before they reached the time of Ma'asrot, and then redeem them while they still have not reached the time of Ma'asrot Chayavin. They are subject to the Ma'aser obligation because when the Ma'aser obligation took effect, they were no longer Hegdish. And the Mephoshim explained, when we say Shelo Banu Leonat Ma'asrot, before they reach the time of Ma'asrot, meaning before the produce has been fully processed, and that would make it become fully obligated in Ma'asrot, like we explained Earlier when we learned about Ma'asrot, the term Onata Ma'asrot uh, is usually used when referring to a totally different time when the pro- growing produce reaches the point when it becomes edible. But the Mishnah here is actually referring to the completion of processing, which is generally called Gemar Milacha. But later the Mishnah is going to use the expression Nigmeru, and that would be referring to the same stage here, the completion of the processing. The Mishnah continues, Imishabau Onata Ma'asrot Ufda'an Chayvin, so too, if he consecrated them after they reached the time of Ma'asrot and then redeemed them, Chayvin, they are subject to the Ma'asar obligation because here too the produce was not hectic when the processing was completed and therefore it became subject to the Ma'asar obligation. That obligation remains in effect even if the produce was then consecrated and redeemed. Like we learned in the previous Mishnah, the Mephoshim explained, even if it was not redeemed, the obligation remains in effect because the obligation took effect before it was consecrated to the Bet Mikdash. However, if, however, he consecrated them before the processing was complete, 
and the temple official, the Gizba, completed their processing, meaning the processing was completed while it was still Hegdish and under the control of the Gizba, the temple official in charge of Hegdish. And afterwards, the owner redeemed them, Pituin, they're exempt from Asrot, Shebishat Chuvatani Upturin, because at the time of the obligation, meaning at the time that the tithing obligation would normally take effect, they were consecrated and exempt from Asrot. And therefore, even if they are afterwards redeemed, they remain exempt from Ma'asrot. And that is on Abu Ta'ib today's Mishnah Ami. Ba'uch Adonai Le'olam. Amen v'amen.